This past week has been wild. There have been so many new announcements coming out and I'm really excited to catch you all up with it. I mean, from Meta releasing or sharing about their new AI glasses with Ray-Ban, how, first of all, we'll dive into this in a second, but how is it going to be controlled people recording you? You can now record with these glasses. You're never gonna know if you're being recorded. We'll get into that in a sec here. And another one I wanna share with you is about Humane's AI pin. It made its debut on the runway in Paris fashion, of course. And this company, fun fact, was founded by someone who used to work at OpenAI. You can see there's competition there. Also too, Amazon just invested billions, billions with a B of dollars into this company as they are working on a new model for AI, which they are saying is going to be 10 times more powerful than anything that exists today. I'm telling you, we gotta dive into this. All right, you know I gotta give you the whole spiel. Before we get into it, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech, coding, career-related topics. Leave in the comments any other videos you want me to create. Let me know if you are enjoying these tech news. It seems like you are, but give me feedback. Let me know what you like about them, what you don't like. Okay, enough of me talking. Well, I'm gonna talk more, but let's get into the tech news. Meta recently had their Connect event and there was a ton of different innovators, creators, C-suite individuals who attended. One of the biggest announcements, as I mentioned earlier on, was about the collaboration between Ray-Ban and Meta. Now these glasses are not the first of their kind. We've seen many variations of them. Even from Meta and Ray-Ban, this is not the first time something like this is being released. It is more so the improvements, which they are saying improvements on audio, and cameras. They also are saying there's 150 different custom frames and lens combinations. So they're lighter and more comfortable. Now at first I've seen some videos circulating online of people who have gotten their hands on these. I'm like, that's really cool. You can create a lot of interesting content, but is that line gone where there's anything private nowadays? And my mind automatically goes to how these could be used to record people without consent. What if you didn't know about these glasses or you didn't know or recognize that there was a camera in there? That could cause a lot of issues. I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this. Is this something that you would get? I mean, the flip side is this, you know, I, I could see these being really helpful for a variety of reasons, kind of, I don't know. I need to get your thoughts on this. All right, we are moving on to Humane, the new AI pin, which made its debut on none other than the Naomi Campbell during Paris Fashion Week. And earlier in this video, I shared with you how one of the founders used to work at OpenAI, even to make it more intertwined, if you will, is one of the main backers for Humane is none other than the Sam Altman. I mean, no surprise here, it's all very closely intertwined. So this pin can sit on your jacket. We've also seen photos of it sitting on your, uh, your pants. And the whole thing around it is it's this piece of hardware that you don't need to answer, you don't need to physically interact with. So it is sitting on you, but it will then shine uh, if someone is calling you or texting you and you can use your hand to actually read or interact with it. Actually, let's insert here a little clip of the uh, founder of Humane and give you a little demo of what it's capable The legendary of. tech journalist Walt Mossberg wrote in his final column that he felt that soon, one day, technology would become invisible and that the computer would disappear. And we agree. Sorry, this is my wife. I'm gonna have to get this. Hello? Hey, Bethany, how's it going? Good, are you a Ted? Yeah, I'm on the red circle right now, actually. Oh, great, good luck, and don't forget to mention me. <laughs> <laughs> I won't, babe, thank you. Love you. <laughs> Love you too. Bye. Bye. It's gonna get different in a minute. So there's been no announcements as to when this is being released to the public, but I do expect it actually to be pretty soon. I've seen this in the works for, I believe it was last year, last year. It feels like last year that I first heard about it. So it's been in the works for a while now, and I'm sure many years prior. And uh, they aren't saying when it's going to be released, but they do say that privacy for them comes first. So one of the things that I thought of is, okay, so this device is going to always be listening to me. It's kind of like a wearable 
device, so it's even more, it feels more invasive than say like Alexa or any of these other smart speakers. So they go on to say that there are certain words that you can use to ensure it is not always listening. You can turn it off essentially by saying words such as uh, a no wake word. So you can pick what that is. And uh, their vision is building products which place trust at the center. So they are really trying or they're saying they're really trying to put trust first. And I'm really curious to see how they are able to do that with a device that needs to be listening to you. It's very curious. Would you get one of these? I'm also wondering if these have the power to replace iPhones. I really do think they might, but curious to hear if you disagree with me. All right, Tesla released their new model, their cheaper or cheapest actually model. This actually didn't really make big news. And I'm curious if it's because it literally just was announced or if no one cares anymore, but they released their new electric SUV that doesn't necessarily need to break your bank or that's what they say anyway. So here is the cost of this. So they are saying the starting price for the RWD model Y is $43,000, which is 3,700 less than the AWD model that was recently discontinued, they say or went away. Was it discontinued? I think it was. Also too, the good news is though, it does qualify for the federal EV tax credit. I'm Canadian, I don't know these tax credits, but apparently you get one for $7,500 if you purchase this EV electric vehicle. I don't know, it doesn't really do it for me. I'm kind of, I'm all about the idea behind electric, of course, but Tesla, just kind of leaves me with this like, doesn't excite me very much. I'm curious though, for any Tesla owners out there, am I missing something? Next vehicle, should I switch to a Tesla? Let me know. All right, the last thing I wanna to touch on is more of an interesting thing that I've been reading a lot about, not necessarily hot in the news right now, but I think something that you'll find very interesting, which is around quantum computing. So we've seen quantum computing, the topic of it, the subject of it, in the news a lot lately, because we are making great leaps and bounds with it, which is really exciting. I mean, it still takes me a minute to fully comprehend that quantum, comp to, to be able to, so this is it like combusts my brain. I'm used to computers being able to do zero or one, true or false, but having this quantum computer being able to have multiple scenarios at once is really, I don't know, it's mind blowing. Maybe it's just me, but I think it's really cool. But the downside or the flip side to that is around encryption. So I was reading a lot about this recently. Here on Forbes actually, it says, quantum computers could make today's encryption defenseless. And honestly, this could be done in a matter of seconds. So let's go into it a little bit here. What they are saying, and this isn't just from Forbes, this is just research, I'm just reading this specific article, is that because encryption relies on complex mathematical problems that take an immense amount of time for traditional computers to be able to solve, I mean, almost impossible, it's not, but it just feels that way because it takes so long. When you're able to use something like quantum computing, this could break encryption in a matter of minutes, they are saying. So now there is the flip side, which is great, which means they are working on putting up guardrails for these quantum computers to not be able to do that. But I've just really gone down this rabbit hole when it comes to quantum computing. It's really fascinating to me. And I know there's a ton different, more work that needs to be done around quantum computing. We aren't where we are, you know, but I do think there's going to be a boom just like there was with AI, I think there's going to be one around quantum computers. And I just really hope it's in the near future kind of, maybe I shouldn't be hoping that, but it just seems, it's very fascinating to me. Curious to hear if you have done any reading up on quantum computing, your thoughts on it. I'm really geeking out about this right now. So if you have, leave in the comments and let's have a full on conversation about it. All right, that is it for this week's tech news. It was kind of a lighter week for the number of things that have happened, but the things that did happen made a big impact. Make sure to leave in the comments your thoughts, feedback, questions on anything we covered today, and I'll see you very soon. Hit that subscribe button so I will see you really soon. Bye everyone.